enemies. Hallelujah. 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 Unlock it, Jesus. Unlock it, Lord. Open the door, Jesus. That every when you open the door, no man can shut it. I bless you in advance. I praise you in advance. I thank you in advance. I don't see it, but I believe you. I believe you. If we don't say nothing else, let's praise him because we believe you. I believe you, Jesus.
the Lord. Let us go into the house of the Lord. Ain't no telling what he's going to do. Let us go into the house of the Lord. There's no telling what God's going to do. Let us go into the house of the Lord. Ain't no telling what God's going to do. Let us go into the house of the Lord. Sister Annette, ain't no telling what God's going to do. Let us go into the house of the Lord. My expectation is high. My expectation is high. My expectation is high. My expectation is high. this morning. Is your expectation to praise God high on this morning? Come on, let's give God a shout in this place. Hallelujah! Let the 
church may praise the Lord. Let the church that praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, put your hands together one more time for the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. We are happy to be in the house of prayer this morning because here is safety. Here is the moving of the Lord. If I may add, the moving of the water is going on this morning. God is already healing. He's already delivering and bringing forth. I am happy to be in the house of the Lord. Help me praise the Lord one more time this morning. We thank you for joining us today, even by the airway. We are coming to you live from High Point, live on your Facebook page, or highpointlive.org on your website. Please hit your share buttons and call somebody and let them know that we are on praising the Lord and you're free to come down even in person and join us at 3269 Old Concord Road in Smyrna, Georgia where the Spirit of the Lord is still going on. The Lord told me this week that the, Lord, the Church of God is going higher and it's still coming on up. So get in the groove with God and praise Him and let Him know that you appreciate His goodness and His mercy. Come on this morning, Church of God. Put your hands together and scream hallelujah. Tell Him hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let us bow our heads in a word of prayer. Lord, thank you this morning. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. You have been so good. You have been so good. You have been so good, God. You looked in on us. Lord, you're touching right now. Thank you for our son, Lord, that you are touching right now in the name of Jesus. You're even healing him as he sit in his home, God. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your consideration. <laughs> oh, it could have been some other kind of way, Lord, but you considered us. And we thank you right now, God, for your healing virtue. Lord, remember the church of God this morning, looking for you, expecting God, knowing that you are the author and the finisher of our faith. God, we are standing on your promises. We are standing on your promises. We are standing on your word, God. You said to look to you, Lord. Oh, God, when things look grim, you said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we don't have to fear nothing, God, because you are yet in control. Lord, look on somebody today in the midst of us or under the sound of our voice. Touch them in the name of Jesus. Let your blood cover right now. Even that heart, God, that's heavy, that don't know which way to turn, is in the midst of decision making. God, you are the one that gives direction. And we know you are able to give an answer that is appropriate for the situation. Oh, hallelujah. Even cancer has to stand but stand back god let your spirit take precedence over all oh father god we're not just in here going through the motion but god we are in here working out our soul salvation because we know that after a while you're gonna wipe all tears from our eyes you're gonna remove all trouble and God you're gonna teach us how to walk indeed by faith God oh, and not by sight you said look to you because you are able to bring us forth now Lord look on our pastors in their absence today you know where they are you're looking at them where they sit God 
God. Oh, strengthen and refresh and bring them forth. Inspire them once again, God, to do the work that's in their hand because I know you are capable even though sometimes the flesh get weak. God, you said in your word, you are strong and in you, Lord, we are made stronger in our weakness, God. We thank you and we praise you and we expect blessings to come forth today. Bless each and every portion of this service. Get glory out of it. Even save the backslider today, God. Bring those forth that need to be saved. Speak to their hearts, God, and give them strength. Clap your hands and begin to praise him and tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. One more time, tell him thank you. Oh, I felt pretty good to my soul. Tell him thank you. Woo! Hey, Lord, he's a good God. Elder Manning is coming at this time to give us a scripture. Read him by saying amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Good morning. Praise the Lord. This morning's scripture reading is comprised of three uh, short scriptures. And I think when read in conjunction uh, together with one another, they give even greater encouragement and impact. And they are Isaiah 40 and 31, Psalm 27 and 14, Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. And I will read them in your hearing. Thus begins the reading of God's word, Isaiah 40 and 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew, uh, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Psalm 27, 14. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Yeah. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not unto thine own understanding. Get out of your head. In all, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Wait on the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Lean on the Lord, and he shall direct thy path. The word of God for the people of God. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. I believe you came to give God glory on today. Can we just do one favor for it? Let's just give God just a great shout in this place. Hallelujah! Look at your neighbor and just tell your neighbor, neighbor, I ain't going to be in the reserve. <laughs> so you're going to have to get used to my hallelujah. You're just going to have to get used to my shout. <laughs> You're going to have to get used to my thank you, Jesus, huh? because the Lord is at work for my good. Huh? How can I keep my mouth shut? Huh? How can I keep my... Hey, 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 hey. Somebody, let's give God one more shout. Hallelujah! I'll put those hands together and let's celebrate the Lord in this place. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Lord wants, and we're going to do what the Lord ordered on today. You're going to live to see it happen. 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 See it happen. You're gonna live to see it happen. Live, 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 live. 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 You're gonna live to see it happen. You're gonna live to see it happen. Say it to your neighbor, encourage him, yeah. You're gonna live to see it happen. Hold your head up high, be encouraged, yeah. You're gonna live yeah. to see it happen. Hey, you're gonna live to see it happen. Yeah. You're gonna live to see it happen. 
Live, 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 live. 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 Oh, you're gonna live to see it happen. You're gonna live to see it happen. That's why we ought to praise God. Thank God in advance. You're gonna live to see it happen. That's why you ought to praise Him. Praise Him in advance. You're gonna live to see it happen. 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 Live, 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 This is what the Lord ordered. Live, 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 live. Live, 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 live. Whatever you do, live, live, live. Whatever you do, live, live, live. Whatever you do, live, Whatever you do, live, No weapon formed against you. It will not prosper. It will not prosper. Live, 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 through heartaches and pain, through sickness and rain, live, 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 live,
somebody next to you just tell them I believe God for more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's able. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hallelujah. If you're next to you, want somebody next to you. I just want you to link up with them and encourage them in the spirit. Live. You can't quit now. We can't die now. Live. You got to praise. Got too much praise to do. Got too much praise to do. Got too much praise to do. Live. 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 Victory, victory is in the room. Hey, hey, victory, victory in the room. Hey, oh, oh. victory, victory is in the room. Hey, victory, victory is in the room. Hey, victory, victory is in the room. One more time.
has all glory and he is excellent is his name he's all powerful he's all glory Your 
my praise for the blessing that God has done for me. One more time. try to put him in a little box and make you think that it's not going to happen God will show up he'll show up he'll show up and he will heal I'm happy today you may be seated I'm talking about a great God a great God that will show up when you need him. Our announcements are coming at this time, after which you will hear from the choir. Now, just because it's the announcements, that's no sign that, <laughs> that you can be quiet. Because when the Spirit of God shows up in a dark moment, sometimes it makes you howl out, even in a hospital. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Good morning, High Point family. These are your upcoming events and announcements. Calling all artists. Here's an opportunity for your creativity to shine. The Point Family Resource Center is sponsoring Art in the House, an art show. Pull out your canvases, brushes, clay, jewelry, or pencils and share your gifts with the world. The art show is May 5th, so you have plenty of time to get ready. The entry fee is $40. Whatever the artist sells belongs to them. Don't be shy. Share your gift. Please begin signing up. See Sister Sharon High Williams if you would like to register for the art show. High Point, save the date for a special Good Friday service. This is taking place on March the 29th at 7 p.m. This service is going to be featuring seven elders on the seven last sayings of Jesus Christ. This is a very special service and you do not want to miss it. So make sure that you are in the house March 29th at 7 p.m. High Point family, join us for our very special Resurrection Sunday service on March 31st. The Music and Fine Arts Department will be presenting Don't Let His Name Go Down. You don't want to miss this tremendous production. Bring a guest. We will see you there. Please include all the names listed on the prayer list in your prayer time. To see a full prayer list, visit our website at www.highpointlive.org. This concludes our morning announcements, High Point family. Have a great week.
Almighty. I hear that song. My soul says yes. Yes. Yes, my Lord. My soul says yes. Yes, yes. All right. <laughs> we, we must be obedient today. Amen. But we feel the spirit of the Lord. Amen. God is so good. So good. Amen. Amen. I'm getting hung up with my mask. As you know, I just recovered. Amen. And I'm still protecting myself. Amen. Amen. But at this time, we're going to call for the family of little Ziana Michelle Harris. This is our great grand. And we're so happy to have some of our extended family here today. We have uh, my husband's cousins, Bertha and Deborah, and Deborah's daughter. We have Brother Clay, Minister Clay. We're going to even ask our extended family, my husband's cousins, if they don't mind, to come and stand with the family. as we dedicate little Ziana. Amen. We thank God the, the baby's little Ziana's other little grandma. She's here today. Amen. We just thank God for the whole family being assembled together. Amen. This is just a beautiful occasion. And I'm going to, I thought my husband had this in the um, place here. But we're just thanking God yes. for the 13 grandchildren, <laughs> the 13 <laughs> grands, yes. and the three great-grands. So we were trying to get them all together, amen, but um, as it is, we have little Ziana today, and we're just so happy. We're going to ask the elders, uh, if they would, to come and anoint the baby and the family members. I'm going to go ahead, and when the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Now, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, looking for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And inspired by the Holy Spirit, he came into the temple. And when the parents brought the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God. Amen. We're going to ask great-grandpa. And I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> Zion is like, no. No. Now Mary and Joseph felt highly honored and favored of God when the baby Jesus came into their home. It was a sober, sacred privilege which they shared with God as parents. They would have to provide the right kind of family life, education, counsel, spiritual climate in order to prepare Jesus for his God-given work. Therefore, when they brought the baby Jesus to the temple for the blessing of Simeon, they also dedicated themselves to the sacred responsibility. Now, Amaya, the privilege of parenthood is God-given. 
and you will be responsible to him for the way you rear little Ziana. Fitting it is, therefore, that you have come to present Ziana for the blessing of God and to dedicate yourself to being a Christian parent before the Lord. Amen. Now, as a household of faith in the family of God, we, the members of High Point Christian Tabernacle, congratulate you for bringing little Zion, the child of your love and the love of the Heavenly Father. We wish each of you to feel in your heart that you are doing a very important thing in us presenting little Zion to the Lord in his sanctuary, even as the child Jesus was presented in the temple. Be assured that God is pleased with this beautiful observance of the ancient custom and know in your heart that God will hear every prayer for this child who you are dedicating unto him on this day. Now, do you, the members of High Point Christian Tabernacle, receive little Ziana in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you promise to be under her father, mother, brother, sister, and friend? You may respond by saying, we do. Do you, the members of High Point, receive this child in the name of the Lord? And do you promise again to nurture her? to be father, mother, brother, sister, and friend. Again, respond in the name of the Lord, we do. Now, Amaya, and now do you dedicate this child unto the Lord God? And do you promise as an elder child of the Heavenly Father to pray for and with Zion that she may grow in the knowledge and love of God? Right? Do you rededicate your home as a sacred shrine and with a Christian environment in which the spiritual nature of your child may grow and unfold? Do you promise to do all you can by precept and example to lead Zion at a proper age to a public confession of the Lord Jesus Christ and to the obedience of his will? Amen. Let us all pray. Heavenly Father, in whose love our earthly parenthood takes on meaning, we thank thee for the gift of children. We place little Ziana before thee, O holy God. Thou dost yearn for her fellowship, that she should know thee and serve thy kingdom. Grant to Amaya, to the grandparents, to the aunts, the uncles, the cousins, the sisters, brothers, friends, we beseech thee, grant them all wisdom, patience, justice, truth, and faith in guiding little Zion physically, mentally, and spiritually to give glory to thy son. God, in the name of Jesus, let your perfect will be done concerning this child. You know the way she, that she takes. You know the end from the beginning. You know the purpose and the plan. You know the thoughts that you think toward her. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give her a hope and a future and to bring her to an expected end. God, we come against every generational curse. Destroy the yoke of the enemy. Oh, God, raise her up to sing praises to your holy name. Raise her up to do your will. God, we come against every childhood disease. We declare today that no weapon that is formed against her is going to prosper. Oh, mighty God, grant this mother today. Hallelujah, the grace, the wisdom, the fortitude, the mindset to walk up right before you. Oh, God, that she may rear her child properly by precept and example. 
God, make provision for them. Make provision. Supply every need. Oh, God, keep her safe from all harm and danger. God, these and all other blessings, we ask even bless all that stand with this child. Oh, God, let them love each other as never before. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. We present to you again. Amen. Little Ziana Michelle. <laughs> Amen. Come on, let's give God a praise for Ziana Michelle Harris. Amen. Come on, let's give God glory. Amen. All right, let's give out a hand praise.
Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I give you praise and thanks. I give you praise and thanks. I give you praise and thanks. Give him another thunderous hand praise. He is so worthy. He is so worthy. Amen, 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 God. We forgot to mention, and I want to take time to appreciate our pastors being in the midst. Thank the Lord that she is doing better. Amen. We thank you. And happy birthday, come to be, Pastor. Happy birthday to be. Amen. Amen. We wanted to appreciate them. We've come to the wonderful portion of service where we can hear words directly coming from the Lord through our blessed brother in the Lord, Elder Eric Good. He has become such a friend of ours since Israel. My husband and I have special places in our heart for him and Sister Good. We thank God for him today. He is our beloved, faithful brother. Let us receive him by the words of saying amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. God is good. Can we just exalt him in this place for his goodness and his grace? Where would we be if it had not been for the Lord that was on our side? Can we just exalt him just for a minute? Can we just worship him in this place? He is worthy, worthy to be praised. That's why we say we exalt thee. We exalt thee. We exalt thee. Come on and help me out, praise thee. Yes, yes. Let's give him reverence. Let's give him praise in this place. Hallelujah. He's the only one that gets the praise. He's the only one that gets the honor. place. Hallelujah. Let him hear you. He wants to hear a new yes on today. He wants to hear your worship in this hour. We reverence him. We worship him. We thank him. We honor him. Oh yeah. Give the Lord a thunderous clap praise. Hallelujah. We can do a little bit better than that. Yes. It's because of him, through him, and by him all things are possible. Amen. Give an honor to God who is the head of our life. Amen. And to the finest pastors, Apostle Thomas and Pastor Carolyn Vincent. Amen. We reverence and honor them today. Amen. Who have been faithful down through the years. Good stewards over what God has given them charge over. Amen. We are a debt-free church. Amen. Debt-free. Everything that we get now is a surplus. Oh, yes. I understand there's not many churches that can wear that badge of honor as trophies of Christ's victory. Amen. And we give an honor to the first family. God bless them. 
Amen. And just like my sister Sylvia said on Wednesday night, hallelujah, all the, the my sisters, amen, from the youngest to the oldest, are powerhouse preachers, amen, and no slack to their husbands, those that are, mar that are married, amen, the men of God as well, hallelujah. And we give an honor to all the elders, deacons, ministers, saints, and friends, and to our online viewers, thank you, hallelujah. For tuning in and lastly and definitely not least amen to my bride my bestie amen my best friend over there amen she's been hanging strong 22 years now amen sister Cheryl good we thank God for her amen God's got some great things in store for you honey the Lord wanted me to share that with you you stay right there and the Lord continue to allow the Lord to minister to you Amen. God's doing some things behind the scenes, saints. Amen. Let the church say amen. 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 Hallelujah. I would like to invite your attention to the book of John. John chapter 12. And verse 12. Amen. This is Jesus, the triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Amen. Palm Sunday. That's what today is. Hallelujah. Do you feel Jesus in the room? How many feel the Lord in the room today? Hallelujah. Good things can happen when the Lord is exalted. And he has preeminence in our lives. Amen. And as we prepare to enter the most important week in human history, I believe this week deserves special praise, special consideration, special reflections. Because none of us will be, hallelujah, the sons and the saints of God. If it were not for what D Jesus did on this week. Hallelujah. Amen. So tell the nearest person next to you this week, Palm Sunday, Palm is the week prior to the miracle. Yeah. Amen. That's not my subject, but this is the week prior to the miracle. Yeah. Understand the significance of that statement that this week yeah. activates the entry doors into the last week of Jesus' earthly ministry with his disciples. Amen. Palm Sunday is seven days prior to the ultimate excruciating price of Jesus being led to his crucifixion, soon to be agonizing in pain through an instrument of his exaltation, an old rugged cross. And because of Jesus' heroic act and sacrifice, it launched the New Testament covenant of grace that God promised which has been prophesied throughout Old Testament. And that's a good place to give God praise. Hallelujah for grace. Amen. On this morning, amen. I promise to be brief yet concise this morning so we can hurry up and go to our favorite Sunday afternoon dining spot. Maggiano's Papa Do's, Bay Breeze, Bonefish Grill, Golden Corral. Have I named yours yet? Amen. I have learned, it's, it's fortunate for us, I have learned sitting under our pastor's ministerial leadership classes, what I classify as the three S principles in my preaching style. Somebody say, stand up. Yes, stand flat-footed. Speak, thus saith the Lord. The next principle is someone say, speak up. Yes, don't let your words be silent. Speak with precision, cry loud, and let the enemies of the Lord be scattered. Yeah. And finally, somebody say, sit down, yeah. shut up, cut it off. <laughs> After the Lord has been speaking, it's no longer the Lord, it is now you. Because no one is up here to hear my commentary, argument, and opinion on the scriptures when we need a word from the Lord. Amen. You know, I heard a preacher say it this way, that 30 minutes is long enough for a good sermon and too long for a bad one. Amen. So I'm going to allow my words to speak with urgency and immediacy because we sound like we're hungry. Amen. Let the church say amen. I'm in John chapter 12, verse 12. If you have it, say amen. On the next day, much people that were come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees, and went forth to meet him and cried. Let everyone read aloud, please. Hosanna! Blessed is the King of Israel. 
that cometh in the name of the Lord. You may have your seat in the presence of the Lord. This morning, my subject is the palm leaves are only the beginning. The palm leaves are only the beginning. Father, we thank you this morning for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for what you've done on this day that we may have access to eternal life. We don't take it for lightly or for granted. God, let your words, hallelujah, dance up off the pages today. Let someone be saved, healed in the name of Jesus, baptized. Oh, yes, trouble the waters even now. Let someone go down in your name and come up with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. God, we give your name glory and honor, and it's in Jesus' name. Let every heart say amen. The observance of Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem is what we historically call Palm Sunday or Passion Sunday. It is recorded in all the Synoptic Gospels and here in the book of John. I feel that it's imperative to understand the significance of palm trees as described in the Bible. For palm trees symbolize strength, beauty, joy, and salvation in the scriptures. How many have had the opportunity to watch that movie, The Passion of Jesus Christ? Came out in 2004. For me personally, Jesus' experience the week prior to his death was equally captivating as his journey to the cross because it showed both sides of his story. It showed both his human nature and his divine nature. Staying the course or simply walking away. But ultimately, arrived at the correct conclusion in the Garden of Gethsemane through his tormenting cry saying, Nevertheless, not as my will, but as thy will. John chapter 12, starting at verse 13. People are cutting branches from palm trees laying them across Jesus' path and waving them in the air as he entered Jerusalem the week prior to his death. You see, the people only saw and greeted Jesus not as King and King and Lord of Lord, as the true and living God to take away the sins of the world, but viewed his existence as a potential political leader, one to overthrow the Roman government. They shouted, Hosanna, meaning save now. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the king of Israel. If you ever had that opportunity and privilege to go over to Israel, we had that opportunity as a church. I believe that you would agree that it's both inspirational and humbling to follow in the footsteps of Jesus' earthly ministry. I would venture far enough to say that most of the guided bus tours in Israel will gather their groups on the top of the Mount of Olives, which is one of the historical landmarks. And at here at this top of the Mount of Olives, you'll discover a very steep road that winds around and it goes down into the Garden of Gethsemane into the Kidron Valley. And as a visual, this is where Jesus was coming into the city of Jerusalem through the Eastern Gate. Today, I have chosen to reflect upon Palm Sunday from the Gospel of John's account. Because John's perspective and account of Jesus' life and ministry are different than the other synoptic Gospels in the sense that John places a much more greater emphasis upon the divinity of Jesus to a much greater degree than the other gospel writers. John does not concern himself in his gospel with the genealogical facts that Jesus is a direct descendant of King David and Abraham, as detailed in the book of Matthew. His primary focus is not to chronicle the many action-packed events of Jesus' day as they occurred through Mark's recount, as recorded in his book beginning in Mark chapter 1 of his gospel. Unlike Luke, 
John does not focus on the circumstances surrounding Jesus' supernatural birth. Luke, on the other hand, gives a detailed natural account from the eyes of a physician and describing Jesus' birth, childhood, and development. Apostle John wants the readers of his gospel to understand above all things that Jesus Christ is God Almighty to prove conclusively that Jesus is the Son of God and that all who believe in him will have eternal life. Hallelujah. And I believe by the sheer numbers that we have here in the room that a majority of us can attest through verification that Jesus was the Word made flesh. For in John chapter 1, verse 14, the Bible says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Hallelujah. Yes. I've been instructed by the Holy Ghost to pause long enough here to say to someone, to stop your worrying because the Word is doing the work. Get your hands off of it. Stop your worrying. Stop putting your hands into it. Yes. Some things were only meant for you to handle and not to carry. You're not supposed to carry this burden. You're supposed to only handle it for a season. And once that season has come to a conclusion, you're supposed to release it. Can we give the Lord a hand praise? I don't know who that was for, but the Word is doing the work. John further illustrates his connection that Jesus came riding on this young donkey, descending from the Mount of Olives through the gate facing east, which Ezekiel describes in detail in chapters 40 and 44 of his book. John wanted us to understand that Jesus was the fulfillment of the messianic prophecy of the ninth chapter of the prophecy of Zechariah. For in Zechariah 9 and 9, the Bible says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly. Riding upon a donkey and upon a colt, the foil of a young donkey. And as we heard in this scripture prophecy, there was great rejoicing when Jesus entered into the holy city. Luke collaborates in his gospel, Luke 19 and 36. He says, and as he went, they spread their clothes in the way. Understand the spreading of their clothes would be a modern-day equivalent of the red carpet experience, similar to what we had here at our Black History Month on last month. We expressed esteem, honor, and gratitude to those who had contributed to the arts. Understand that the spreading of the clothes would be on a similar scale to a red carpet experience at the Oscars or the Grammys or the Tonys or the NAACP Awards. Verse 37 says, and when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all of the mighty works that they had seen. Now, I don't know how you feel about it, but it's refreshing to know that everybody here in the sanctuary and those that are watching us online have something to praise God for. Yes. I understand, Elder Eric, that's about half the church over here that said amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says that the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice. They didn't praise God with a minimal, moderate Low intensity of excitement. The scripture says they didn't praise God. Oh, yes, but they praised him with a loud voice. Oh, yes, and they had a reason for this loud voice. For all of the mighty works that they had seen. 
Yes, there's something about having seen God work. Something about the name of Jesus. Something about that name. Yes, something about that name will not let you just be quiet about it. Yes, you can try to contain it. You can try to put a lid on it. You can try to squash it. You can try to be as composed and politically correct and dignified as you want to be. But when you begin to think how far God has brought you from, oh, yes, when you begin to begin to think, oh, yes, you don't have to go back five or seven years to retestify a testimony that was red hot back then. All you have to do is think on this morning when the Lord said, foot, come out the bed. Oh, yes. I know my say. Yes, foot, come out the bed. When the Lord says, inhale, and now exhale. And you didn't even have to think about it. Oh, just how good God has been to you on this week. Yes, there's something that's going to quicken a praise in your spirit. Has he blessed anybody in the room? Has he helped anybody in the room? Has he healed anybody in the room? Has he put food in somebody's refrigerator on this week? Has he caught somebody up on delinquent bills from January of this year? Then let the whole multitude give him praise. Yes. That's it. God is looking for a yes on today. The choir already sung and said a yes. Yes. Psalms 107 said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Yes, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Yes, today we're rejoicing here today because Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Paul said in the church of Coloss in Colossians, the first chapter, verse 21, he says, And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now he hath reconciled. Oh, yes. I understand there was a lot of upset folks huh, when that documentary footage Freaknik came out on this week exposing the sin of debauchery. Huh. Oh, yes. For such were huh, some of us huh, enemies in our own minds. Yes, thieves and drunkards that abusive to others, idolaters, covetous, sexual immorality. But ye are not washed. Boko uh, say. Yes, tell somebody I'm now washed. Yes, sanctified, justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, tell somebody don't let the sins of your past. Oh, tell them, tell them, tell them. Don't let the sins of your past dictate your future. Oh, yes. And I understand we're all dressed up today. Uh, and today is the week leading into the remembrance of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrecting. And the beautiful Palm Sunday that we're experiencing today. But if you're here today uh, and you need salvation uh, and you need redemption uh, and you need a change in your mind and you need a change in your direction, uh, I don't want anybody to miss out on the love of God and not receiving the free gift of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. I don't want anyone to leave here today discouraged because you think you have to get yourself together first before you can stand before God. I don't want anybody to get caught up in the over-contextualizing of the palm leaves, the red carpet, or the young donkey. And yes, these events they're great and they're significant in their context, but there is nothing on the Lord's agenda than the saving of your soul. Oh, yes, the saving of your soul. As Jesus, he soon discovered upon his arrival into Jerusalem that the palm leaves they broke off to meet him were just that, nothing but leaves. Oh, yes, there was no real worship in their praise. There was no real hope in it. No love, no joy, no peace, no longevity in their salvation. Oh, to get them over in the seasons of the rough patches and the rough times. Oh, yes, that word, David says, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Oh, yeah, when your back is up against the wall, 
You need a word that you can pull out for such a time as this. Yes, it was nothing but lip service. Oh, somebody holler back at me and tell me it was nothing but palm leaves. Yes, and this is done. This is done, saints, through man's tradition and man's vain worship. For in John, the fourth chapter, the Bible says that God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Oh, yes, and now we can see from another advantage point, as the scripture reveals itself even more. Imagine, if you will, the people standing there awaiting Jesus' arrival into the city of Jerusalem with palm branches, taking off their actual religious garments, their robes, their tunics, and their cloaks, and laying them down at the feet of Jesus. And then on the other side, just a little ways off, you had what we say today in modern terminology, haterade going on. You see, you had the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the Sanhedrin, those of the scribes of Herod's court, hating on Jesus, standing over there talking about who does he think he is? I can see them with their arms folded and their face all tore up, uh, saying, who does he think having the whole world following after him? <laughs> oh, yes. And then one of the Pharisees uh, said with a loud voice, he, he couldn't even contain himself. He said, Master, you need to rebuke your disciples. <laughs> oh, yes. Talking about Hosanna, save us. Uh, I can imagine just looking at Jesus uh, shaking his head. <laughs> saying, you don't even know who I am uh, or what I'm capable of. Uh, oh, yes, I believe we heard that message from our apostle. Uh, you don't even know who I am uh, or who I'm capable of. Uh, oh, yes, I can imagine Jesus for that moment just thinking, uh, oh, don't you know who I am? Uh, oh, I'm the one that sit upon the circle of the earth, uh, and the inhabitants there are grasshoppers. Uh, I'm the one that stretches out heaven as a curtain that I may spread it as a tent that I may dwell in. I'm the one uh, that brings princes to nothing and makes judges of this earth unto vanity. Uh, but what Jesus actually said was, if I told them uh, to hold their peace, uh, a rock would immediately cry out in their place uh, and cry, Holy! It's the Lamb of God. Jesus is the Lord and Savior. I am that I am, and I'm not slack concerning my promises. Oh, and yet, uh, they were the religious leaders of that time, Elder White, uh, because they should have known better. Uh, they had the Old Testament writings in their libraries. Uh, they had Zechariah 9 and 9 that says, O daughter of Zion, uh, shout, uh, O daughter of Jerusalem, behold, thy king cometh unto thee. Uh, he is just, uh, having salvation, lowly, uh, riding upon a young donkey and upon a coat of a young donkey. Uh, you see, family, I've come to find out uh, religious people and self-righteous people have a form of godliness, but without the dunamis power. Uh, that's the power to affect change uh, because they haven't allowed their heart heart to come into relationship to God's word. Oh, yes. Tell somebody next to you, it's a heart thing. I know we do that little sign, the heart. It's a heart thing. Yes, it's all about our heart, saints. Uh, you see, Jeremiah understood this all too well. He said in Jeremiah 17 and 9, he says, the heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Yes, and to my sisters, yes, you know I'm your brother. I love you, so don't throw darts and arrows at me with your Maybelline and your foundation spread so evenly across your beautiful Nubian face. The scripture says, the heart, what shall I say? <laughs> is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Yes, and to my brothers, 
you know we fam. <laughs> yes, y'all can call me Unc, Big E. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> with your muscles and your six packs, with your painted on jeans and your t shirts, form fitting suits, and your mother curly hairstyle. Yes, but the Bible says the heart uh, is deceitful uh, above all things and desperately wicked. Who, the Bible says, can know it? Well, I'm glad you asked, because the Bible says the answer is Jesus, who searcheth the heart. Yes, he says, I'm the one that tries the rain, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Understand that God is looking for a greater return on his investment, saints, in 2024. Uh, oh, yes, which he has designated as the year of unceasing success. The year of unceasing success, yes, but it's conditional. Uh, it's contingent upon our response with him with a new yes. Uh, oh, yes, which is far more significant than the laying down of the palm leaves and honoring God with our lips when God is after our hearts today, uh, Matthew, the 15th chapter, the people draw nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips. Uh, but their heart is far from me. Uh, oh, yes, this Palm Sunday uh, is a reminder to welcome Jesus in your heart uh, and be willing to follow him. Uh, don't follow him with your lips only, but follow him with your love. Don't follow him just by the waving of your hands, but follow him by the washing of your heart. Don't follow him just through your hearing only, but in your doing also. In the book of James, yes, it admonishes us. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. Uh, in other words, yes, it's good practice to hear intently and be a good listener. Yes, I get that. Yes, it's good to hear the whole matter of a thing before making a hasty decision. Yes, yes, that's commendable. Check. Uh huh. But those who trust in God don't merely become experts at listening, they believe in God by faith to act on what they hear. Yes, understand. Uh, we can sit around and listen all day, uh, but faith without works is still dead. Uh, God is looking for faith in action, uh, not words only. Uh, if I didn't love you, I wouldn't say anything. Uh, I'll just let you keep on living dirty. Uh, but because I love you, <laughs> Faith must be put into action. How can I say I love you and there's no actions to follow? You have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds and I'll show you my faith by my deeds. Oh yes, how can I say I love my wife who I never show loving kindness and affection? How can I say I love God who I have not seen and I hate my brother who I see every day? Oh my God, understand today Today, today, if you are a backslider, there's no better day than today. Oh, yes, to get back into right fellowship with Jehovah Eloheinu, which is the Lord our God. Yes, we have to look at ourselves. Oh, yes, we have to look at ourselves and be found living in the light of his coming. Yes, I hear you, Apostle Vincent. We have to look at ourselves from the mirror of God's word seeing if we are aligned with what God requires to see his face in peace. <laughs> oh, in 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, the scripture says that we must, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done. Whether it be good or bad, we all have to come before him. You understand, no one is going to tell God on that day, I got an appointment that I cannot break. No one's going to tell God, I can't make it today because I got a tea time at 9.45 a.m. 
No one's going to tell God, I have a hair appointment with my barber or my stylist today. Nobody's going to tell God I'm on vacation this week in the Cayman Islands. Nobody's going to tell God they won't let me off work to come and see you. No one is going to tell God I didn't have a warning that you were trying to tell me to get my house and affair in order. Oh, yes. Over in 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, verse 6. Now these things were our example to the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. <laughs> Beloved, I've come to the conclusion. I don't want anything that God says I cannot have. I don't want anything that God is going to make me miss out on the love of God. Ah, you both say. I don't want anything. If God says I can't have that house with that high interest rate and that overinflated mortgage, uh, I don't want that car if it's not the right season for it. Uh, oh, yes, I'll just live with contentment. Uh, be satisfied with what I have until God opens up a greater door and a greater season for me to walk through. Yes, because I don't want to be an offense to God. Uh, you know, I know some people that spend more time washing their car than they do washing their spirit. <laughs> I know more people fixing their hair and makeup than they do their hearts. Uh, yes, God wouldn't want us to leave here today without us magnifying God with our souls. We can't find ourselves being preoccupied with doing other things, uh, taking up more energy, more impetus, more focus, more regard than we do our God. Oh, yes, because his mercy endureth forever. Can we just give God for his mercy? Oh, yes. We're here today because of his mercy. You're standing here because of his mercy. If it had not been for the Lord, where would we be? Because of his mercy. Yes, because of his mercy, saints. Thank God I can stand here today. On this Palm Sunday, thank God we can all stand here today with the desire to serve him, with the desire to praise him, with the desire to worship him. Oh, yes, every day hasn't been sunshine. We felt distracted. Oh, yes, there's been some trouble along the way. But somehow the mercy of God has snatched us uh, from the point of no return. Yes, and on this commemorative week, leading to Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Oh, yes, and I'm going to praise God today like it's my last time. Oh, yes, because he's worthy of my worship. He's worthy of the adoration. He's worthy. He's worthy. Yes, he's worthy. Yes, because failure is not an option. Yes, I hear you, co-pastor. Tell somebody next to you, heaven, I'm on my way to heaven. Oh, yes, and hell is not an option, <laughs> or Hades is not an option. Uh, tell someone on the other side, yes, victory, I'm on my way to victory, uh, and defeat is not an option. Uh, oh, yes, it's not an option for me, uh, because there's no test that's going to make me turn around now. Uh, oh, yes, there's no trial that's going to make me give up on God. There's no sickness that's going to make me curse God. I rebuke that spirit of Job's wife, curse God and die. Oh, yes, there's no enemy that's going to make me turn around now. Oh, yes, no adversary that's going to make me doubt God. He that has begun a good work in me, he's going to finish that thing until the day of Jesus Christ. Yes. I'm still in 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, verse number 7, neither be ye idolaters. Yes, believe God, saints, when he says that he'll have no other God before him, for he is a jealous God. Oh, yes, and to all my sports fans out there, let's not find ourselves getting more ready to readjust our brackets for March Madness, having our chips and dips lined up near our recliner, watching our HD TV that God has blessed us with. Let us not have more energy binge watching, watching a college basketball game than we do for the blood that was poured out on the sinless body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, hear me, saints. If we're not careful, 
we can find ourselves spending more time binge watching, watching Netflix and Prime and Fubo TV, catching up on the latest episodes of Tyler Perry's Sisters, uh, wondering why Maurice is willing to risk everything for a friend, trying to figure out why Danny is still dealing with her mistake with Preston. Uh, if we're not careful, uh, hear me, saints, by the Holy Ghost, uh, or oh, within these next seven days. Uh, as we commemorate Jesus Christ's triumphant entry into Jerusalem uh, on his way to the cross uh, and ultimately to his resurrected victory, uh, we can find ourselves having more interest in a script than we do the scriptures. Uh, be careful, saints. Uh, I, hear, uh, I hear the Lord say, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Oh, yes, Apostle Paul's young protege, Timothy, said it this way. Who will have all men be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth? In other words, what good is it coming to church if no one is getting saved? What good are these social media connections and platforms if nobody's getting saved, set free, and delivered? What good is an invitation to the governor's mansion or the White House if we don't pray that all men be saved? Yes, and even our president and his executive staff and come to the knowledge of the truth. Oh, hear me, young people. Listen to your big brother here today. You would have done an irrevocable disservice to an internal soul if you didn't tell that soul on your job or on your campus that your religion is not enough. Uh, oh, yes, and I understand you're in college and you're in these classes with professors that are promoting pragmatic and debatable views on agendas in Christianity in the 21st century. Yes, uh, but you must still witness uh, to your friends. Uh, let them know that, oh, yes, just being a church member is not enough. Uh, you still must cry loud and tell them that, Faith without works is not enough. You must tell them that Jesus is alive and well and still in the miracle working business. Oh, and he still saves. Understand, saints, that the devil doesn't have all of our young people. Oh, yes. Oh, giving a shout out to uh, uh, Josiah South Hall and Ariel South Hall. I thank God for young people uh, wanting to be married, uh, having desire to be in oneness. Oh, yes, the devil doesn't have all of our young people. Oh, yes, and in the spirit of our Daniel fast, uh, we just concluded a few weeks ago. Uh, oh, yes, one of our central focus points is the saving of our families and the restoration of their souls. Uh, I would like for someone, if you will, uh, for those who have family members and loved ones and looking for God to save them from eternal destruction. Uh, I ask that you lift up your hands right now and say this prayer out loud with me. Lord Jesus, save my family. Oh, yes, save them by your power divine. Save them to new life sublime. Oh, let them know that life can be sweet and joy in you is complete. Save them, save them, save them. Oh, yes, Lord, put an unction and a want to in their spirit. Oh, yes, remove the shackles and the scales from their eyes. Lord, release them into the heart of your mind and into the entrance of thy word, uh, which giveth light. Uh, oh, yes, church, don't give up on your family. Uh, keep praying for your loved ones. Uh, keep praying them into the kingdom. Uh, oh, yes, for I hear in 1 Timothy, uh, the second chapter, for there is one God and one mediator between God and men. The man Christ Jesus. Uh, understand everything that Jesus did riding into Jerusalem on this lowly donkey uh, exemplified humility uh, and not on a horse, a white horse, uh, which he's reserving for when he returns in Revelation 19 and 11 as a God of judgment and war. Uh, therefore, it's crucial in this hour uh, that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life uh, and remains there. Uh, Tell somebody, I don't want to see him on a white horse. <laughs> oh, yes, I'd rather see Jesus now in this hour of grace while his mercy is being extended to us. Tell your neighbor, but time is winding up because what is separating us from a divine relationship with God is sin. <laughs>
<laughs> yes, sin is the problem. Well, why, Brother Good? <laughs> because it stands in the way blocking our relationship between us and God. God. So this is the reason why we, Jesus is our mediator and our access to eternal life. We must, we must, we must be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of sin and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongue. Oh yes, we must. Oh, yes, be born again. For it was Nicodemus who made a profound observation in John chapter 3. He said, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these things, these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. <laughs> Jesus with a calm voice. <laughs> That's something about Jesus. Always a smooth operator. <laughs> he said, Nicodemus. <laughs> Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. I could about imagine Nicodemus went from being observant to being inquisitive, scratching his head. He says, how, how, how can a man be born when he is old? Jesus said, well, Brother Nick, let me tell you something. <laughs> verily, verily, I say unto you, <laughs> except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, <laughs> he cannot enter <laughs> into the kingdom of God. So, in other words, <laughs> in order to be in right standing and fellowship with God, <laughs> we must be willing to be born of the Spirit <laughs> and baptized in water in Jesus' name. <laughs> so, if you're in that number, <laughs> and you want to see God at his coming, <laughs> you can come to this altar when the appeal is made <laughs> and say, Lord, save me. <laughs> I want to be born again. <laughs> oh, yes. And you can do this <laughs> because where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. <laughs> oh, yes. Now I'm back over in the book of John. <laughs> we hear that a great multitude of disciples are crying. <laughs> Blessed is the king. <laughs> Who cometh in the name of the Lord? Oh, yes. Brother Bartimaeus, whom the Lord had healed from blindness, who was among that great multitude. I believe he was among that great number. Part of Bartimaeus' healing was shouting when people told him to be quiet. Let me tell you something. It's easy, Brother Southall, to be quiet when all your bills are paid. <laughs> it's easy, Sister Moment, to be quiet when your body's in good health, uh, full of strength and full of vigor, Brother Willis. Uh, it's easy to sit up in church on a Sunday morning and chillax, uh, like we're at the AMC movie theater on the main event up on Car Parkway somewhere. Uh, it's easy. <laughs> Oh, yes, when you have a good job and good pay and good benefits uh, and all the children are healthy and you have good communication with your husband or your wife. Uh, oh, yes. But when you're in extreme condition. <sighs> when you're in extreme distress. When you're in pain. <laughs> It's going through your whole body, <laughs> Woo! from the crown of your head <laughs> to the soles of your feet. <sighs> Motrin and Aleve and Advil and Tylenol won't do nothing to fix this pain. <laughs> Woo! And you hear Jesus uh, is passing your way. <laughs> I promise you, <laughs> when you know your help is on the way, <laughs> Sister Shelly, <laughs> You'll make some noise because your help is just entered in the room. Can we give God a praise for our help? Let's enter into the room, Brother Anthony. Yes, the Bible says Bartimaeus couldn't even see. But when he heard the noise, he said, what, what, what's that going on over there? They said, Jesus of Nazareth is passing your way. <laughs> it doesn't matter how loud you get, 
how unpleasant your face may look. If you need something from the Lord, right now in a quick hurry, you're not going to be quiet about it. Once you hear that Jesus is coming your way, you'll cry and say, Jesus, the son of David, have mercy on me. The Bible said they began to rebuke him. Woo! Hush your mouth. Be quiet. You're out of order. You need to calm down. The Bible says he amped up his voice a little bit more. Jesus! Son of David! Have mercy on me. Woo. We ought to praise God for mercy. Woo. No way I'm going to be quiet about it. Yes. Woo. Everywhere Jesus showed up in the scriptures, he was accompanied by a multitude of disciples. In that multitude in Luke chapter 8, was a man named Jairus. In that multitude was his wife and his 12-year-old daughter. Jesus had raised from the dead. The Bible says Jairus fell at the feet of Jesus. Here's a little side note. Falling forward is the position of worship. So when your back is up against the wall, fall forward. When you wonder how the bills are going to get paid, fall forward. When you've been diagnosed with cancer, fall forward. Worship gets God's attention. Anyone with children will testify that anybody goes out of their way to help our children, especially when our children are in need. We'll have a special place in the family for the rest of their life. Well, Jairus' wife and his 12-year-old daughter were among that crowd, praising God. Understand, Jesus has just left Bethany, where he performed his last public miracle before his crucifixion. There he raised Lazarus from the dead after four days in the grave. He had already raised Jairus' daughter, but the religious leaders could have easily explained that away because she was still lying in her bed. They could have easily said that she was just in a coma. You see, sometimes your greatest moment in our lives is from a manifested promise of a miracle. I want to say something to someone this morning who has fallen short of the glory of God and has messed up to the umpteenth degree. God knows how to keep you, even after other people have counted you out. When we look at Lazarus' condition after being dead for four days, his own sister said, there's no need to go down there. He's thinking. We have to be careful about who we count out. We have to be careful about when they say they'll never remake it or never recover. <laughs> oh, yes. They've been backslidden for so long, they'll never make it back to God. Well, I want to say to you today that although they may be still residing in the graveyard, woo, all God has to do is call their name, and then they will begin to experience miraculous restoration, spiritually, naturally, mentally, and then God is going to get them up out of that grave, Woo, I want to say something today. Uh, woo, this today. I'm speaking to the backsliders right now. <laughs> and those who have fallen short of the glory of God. Uh, and you want to regain your posture and full fellowship with God uh, through Jesus Christ. Uh, and you don't need to give a detailed explanation when the appeal is made at this altar. Uh, understand there's no one has a heaven or hell to put you in. Uh, so you don't need to have to worry about someone judging you, uh, judging your place in God, uh, trying to get the saints' approval rating, uh, because all have sinned uh, 
and come short of the glory of God. Oh, yes. Can we give the Lord a hand praise for those that are coming back into the fold? Because it was King David that said, there's good news for those in a state of spiritual decomposition. He said, he restoreth my soul. He leads me into the path of righteousness. And he's doing it for his name's sake. Oh, yes, you may have been walking in the valley of the shadow of spiritual death. But the Lord would have you know that he is going to restore you to a state of righteousness in him. Oh, yes, I'm coming to my close. Yes, palm leaves are only the beginning. Yes, you see, it's in with these next seven days in the Bible that Jesus will be going to the court system based on trumped up, trumped up charges by the religious leaders. He'd be hung on a cross, pierced in his side, buried and left for dead. If it wasn't for the resurrected promise of a miracle, oh my God, and victoriously raising after three days from a dusty, dirty grave, then transcending from the natural to the supernatural, so we may have access to eternal life. We can give God praise for just that, for what he's already done. And what he's yet doing, uh-huh, Psalms 92, and I'm closing. The author and psalmist King David, he wrote this worship song full of thanksgiving and praise of what God has done for him. You see, the palm trees also have another significance as described in Psalms 92. The righteous shall flourish like the palm trees, Sister Sylvia. We have to understand that most species of palm trees grow in the desert climates. They become fully rooted in shifting sand, which is by design. Palm trees can tolerate high temperatures. They can survive with very little rainfall, and they won't break in high winds. This is part is going to encourage the saints over the age of 60 and above. This is to dispel the notion that some of us have reserved in our spirit the erroneous conclusion that your best days are behind you. You programmed in your spirit to tell yourself, I'm just going to ease quietly into the sunset. Well, I love you and I can't let you do that. I respect you, but I can't let you go quietly into the sunset. Well, Brother Good, I hear you, but... The Spirit is telling me something now. I fought my battles. I won my wars. I'm done now. I'm going to let somebody else do that. Well, Psalms 92 verse 12 says otherwise. Uh, the righteous, verse 12, shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Uh, those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Verse 14, Lord, how mercy. They shall bring forth fruit when in old age. They shall be what? Fat and flourishing. Fruit in old age, fat and flourishing. Fruit, double fruitful, fat and flourishing, abundance and blessings. Tell somebody to be double fruitful and receive the abundance of rain. Oh, yes, to show that the Lord is upright. Oh, yes, can we give the Lord a hand praise? Double fruitful, abundance of rain as we're standing. Oh, yes, the palm leaves are only the beginning. Jesus is on his way to prepare himself for his death. But in seven days, he will be coming out with all power in his hand. Thank God for the palm leaves, but they are only the beginning as the altar workers are coming. Understand, the Lord would have me tell you today, 
He wants you to empty out all of your pain, your heartaches, your setbacks, your disappointments, having trouble sleeping at night, restlessness, all of your discouragement. This is the first appeal is for those that want to get back in the right fellowship with the Lord. When everybody else counted you out, Jesus said, when? He's giving you the victory today. Why don't you come? It doesn't matter what you may have been in, what unhealthy lifestyle, what addiction, what drug abuse, what marijuana, cocaine, alcohol, uppers, downers, meth, heroin. Doesn't matter whether you're battling emotional distress, anxiety, depression, low self esteem, unhealthy habits, suicidal thoughts. Will you come? Cutting, eating disorders, lying tongue, dishonest to others, the pressures of life. The Lord wants to save somebody today. Won't you come? All the Lord wants you to do is just to lift your hand and say, I'm available to you. I'm available. Available for him to restore you. Your soul to righteousness. Tell the Lord, I'm available. My storage is empty. Will you come? Lawrence, here's a young lady. 
Amen. Come. Anyone else that desires prayer? Come quickly, come quickly. want to be baptized in water in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins if you need to be baptized if you want to be baptized amen you can come Lord, I'm available. I'm available to you. Come on. Lift your hands and say, I'm available.
Hallelujah. Come on, everybody, lift your hands. Lift your hands and begin to worship the Lord. Just lift your hands and begin to worship. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is here. You don't have to leave here like you came. The Lord wants to fill every void. Oh, yeah, my see. Hand up, I say. Come on, Lisa, lay your hands on Bertha. The Lord wants to restore. The Lord wants to heal. The Lord wants to do in you what no one else can do. But you've got to let him. The Lord is a gentleman. He's not going to force his way in. The Lord wants you to surrender your everything. Surrender everything to him. Am I my? Yes, that's right, young lady. Jesus calling by his name. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes, God. Hallelujah. No, 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 I see. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's give God a praise for his word. Give God a praise. Amen. Oh, wow, Elder Good, did we enjoy our son today? Elder Good. The Lord, during this time, the Lord wants to be remembered. He wants to be remembered for the great sacrifice that he made on Calvary. Amen. And even while he was ministering, that little praise came to me. Amen. I'm going to have to drop the key down. But it says, always remember Jesus, Jesus. Always Let's give God a hand clap of praise because his name is beautiful. His name soothes my doubts, calms my fears. His name is a strong tower. The righteous run in and they are safe. Come on, give him a praise for his name. And you can be seated. 
in the name I see in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Come on, we thank God for the soul. Thank God for the soul. Thank God for restoration. Thank God for restoration. Hallelujah. Thank God that the devil is a liar. Woo! Come on and give God praise. Give God praise. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Tell your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, help me. Amen. Tell your neighbor, help me. Sit down. Help me, help me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Come on, we can be seated in the presence of the Lord. God has done great things. Whereof we are glad. Thank you. Come on. you understand why the Lord said if these hold their peace the rocks will cry out somebody's got something to thank God for I know I 
do. I know I got something to praise it for. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's give out a big hand praise. Amen. Hallelujah. We have so much to praise God for. And we sing of his goodness. Amen. With every breath that we're able, we will sing of the goodness of God. We will give him the glory that is due his name. Hallelujah. We thank God even for the preach word on today. Again, let's give God praise for our son, Elder Eric Good. Thank God because preaching is an art and a science. Amen. Which means, amen, each one has their own particular style of preaching. But the science of the word remains the same. It should get results. And we saw results. Souls came. Souls got baptized. Amen. The word accomplished that that it was sent out to do. Amen. And we thank God today for the preached word. Amen. It is offering time. We want everyone to get ready to participate in giving. Those of you who are viewing us online, you may go to highpointlive.org. That's highpointlive.org. Click on the giving link, highpointlive.org. Click on the giving link and sow your tithe and offering. Amen. If you're giving by way of mail, you can send those to High Point Christian Tabernacle, P.O. Box 813699, Smyrna, Georgia, 30081. Amen. Everyone that's giving in the sanctuary, raise your hands. The ushers will serve you, and you can... Give your donation as you leave the sanctuary. Amen. We're asking all of our first time visitors. I think Mother Lawrence needs a you need an envelope. Mother Lawrence needs an envelope, and I do as well. I do as well. Amen. All of our first time visitors, please stand on your feet if you're here for your very first time. Amen. Thank you. Anyone that's here for your first time, amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We thank God for Zion's grandma, her daughter. Amen. Thank God for this young man here, the young lady in the balcony. Anyone else, first time is back here. Thank God for this young lady. Come on, High Point. Let's give all of our first time guests. Please don't make this your last time. Amen. Come back and be with us again. Again, we thank God for uh, my husband's, our cousins. I'm not going to say they're his because they're our cousins. Amen. Cousin Bertha and Cousin Deborah and her daughter and Minister Clay. Amen. Can y'all just wave at the people? Amen. Thank God for our cousins being with us. Amen. Is anyone looking for a church home? Amen. If you feel led to come and join the church today, you may come. Amen. I see a young lady raising her hand. Dr. Almanasi is here to receive you. Anyone that wants to become a member of High Point today. Amen. Come on. Let's give God praise for this young lady. Amen. The Lord said they were coming. Amen. Thank God. You can state your name and tell us how you found out about the church. Okay. Well, my name is Desriana Parks. Um, I found out. I'm like, I live like five minutes away, walking distance, and God called me, and I just ran here. I met with a woman. 
I don't know where she, oh, she's over there. Um, I was just told to come to church, and I don't know who was going to be here or anything. I just ran here. Um, church was over, and she was here, and I just cried, and I was like, I'm so glad you was here. I asked God, can someone be here? She was here. She welcomed me in with a welcoming, loving, warm. Oh, my God. <laughs> come on, saints. Let's give God a praise. Come on, give her a big hug. Dr. Almanasi is going to take her to fill out her paperwork. Isn't God good? He made sure that Sister Good was here. Yes, to minister to her. Amen. God said that he's sending them from the north, south, east, and west. Amen. And we just praise God for what he's doing. Come on, High Point. Give the Lord a praise. We're so glad to have you, daughter. Amen. And looking forward to seeing you grow in God. Amen. Amen. Now, quickly, by way of announcements, we want you to be in prayer for Sister Lori Richardson and her family. Her 97-year-old aunt passed away. Amen. On this morning. So please keep Sister Lori Richardson and her family in your prayers also, all that are sick and shut in. Brother Reggie Lewis was rushed to the hospital on, I believe it was Friday. So he is yet in Kennestone Hospital. So keep Brother Reggie Lewis and Sister Jerry in your prayers as he recovers. Amen. We're glad uh, that Brother Chris Womack was in service with us today. He's recovering from knee surgery. Amen. And as you're standing, we're getting ready to let you go. As you're standing, we want to make you aware that starting on Wednesday night, amen, uh, the first Wednesday in April, we will be having Bible class live. Amen. We're coming back to our campus. Starting in April, the first Wednesday in April, Bible class will no longer be virtual. It will be live here at the church at 7 o'clock. Amen? So we're asking you to press your way and come out to our Wednesday night Bible classes beginning the first Wednesday in April. Don't forget about next Sunday, our music and fine arts department is sponsoring their wonderful production, Don't Let His Name Go Down. Amen. So we don't want to miss it. Get here early so that you can get a good seat. Amen. Now, if all minds are clear, let's look to the Lord. Yes, the brothers. Next Saturday at 10 o'clock, all brothers, please come out and help minister uh, Elder Mack. Elder Mack is asking all brothers to meet him at 10 o'clock next Saturday morning to help put the sanctuary back together, amen, in the other building, amen. We must take all the tables down and put the chairs out, so he's asking all brothers to please. Now, isn't that wonderful that we have not one, but two buildings, two sanctuaries, amen, that we can worship the Lord in. Amen. So we're asking all brothers to be present, if you can, on next Saturday at 10 o'clock to come and help out. Now, to, let us look to the Lord. Father, we just thank you for this, another opportunity that you've given us to come into the house of the Lord to worship. Oh, God, let our worship be real on today. God, we heard the story of the Palm Sunday and how some honored you with their mouths, but their hearts were far from you. God, let us be in that number that worship you in spirit and in truth. Oh, God, help us to be what we say we are. And that is a saint of God, a child of the Most High King. God, we thank you for the great sacrifice that you made for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God, we give you glory. We give you honor for thinking of us, for having a plan of redemption in place. God, even now we come even to pray your blessings upon the offering that we're receiving. Oh God, 
Bless the offering. Bless everyone that is sowing seed today. Oh, God, we ask that you restore unto them 30, 60, 100 fold. In Jesus' name, look on those that had a heart to give. And for some reason, they didn't have on today. Meet them at their point of need that they may be able to give and sow at the next appointed time. Even God bless our pastor as he gets ready to celebrate his 79th birthday. Oh, mighty God. Look on him, God. We thank you for long life. We thank you for long life. Oh, God bless him. Not only today, but this time forth, going forward, let your hand rest heavy on him and bless him to continue to lead these thy people. Oh, God, we just thank you again for the word that we heard on this morning. Seal the word on the tables of our heart. Let us leave, God, with the word sealed in our spirit. Take us through the dangerous streets safely. God, when we arrive at our several different homes, let us find things well when we get there. Everybody said, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. Please hold just a minute. Yes, anyone that brought cards or gifts for a pastor, amen, Deacon Willis is holding the receptacle for those so all, the, all of you that brought cards or gifts to honor him today, amen, you, you can deposit those in the receptacle. God bless you. God bless you. We hope that you have a blessed and prosperous week. Amen. God bless you. Production rehearsal will start in 10 minutes. Ariel, could you meet Sister Daphne in the women's choir room really quick? just to get size.